Sorry, Knicks. Donovan Mitchell is a Cavalier. He goes to Cleveland for Colin Sexton on a sign and trade, Laurie Markkinen, O'Shea Ogbaji, who was just drafted, three first round picks, and two pick swaps. That is a huge package, and the only loser is the Knicks. Why did they extend RJ Barrett if they wanted Donovan Mitchell? That made the Spider deal really hard to do and probably pissed off the Jazz front office. The plan for New York was to get Spida, get good enough to attract another star in the future like Damian Lillard. Now they blew it. I want to react to what this means for the Cavs and the Jazz but I am shocked that Russell Westbrook was not included in a three-team deal. We have been hearing reports that if Russ does move, it might be part of a three-team Donovan Mitchell deal. Now there's an even better chance that Russ ends up in Indiana for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner, and the Lakers are going to have to give up both of their first-round picks. I'm actually a big fan of that deal because all the Lakers get back from Utah was Boyan Bogdanovich, and they need Miles Turner's defense more than anything. If Russ is not not a pacer there's a really good chance he actually starts the season as a laker and i would actually love to see that just for all the chaos but this is amazing for the cavaliers imagine how horrible they were after lebron left them for the lakers they won 19 games two years in a row but major props to their gm kobe altman this man drafted colin sexton darius garland evan mobley and got the team randomly in the james harden nets trade do you remember that when james harden went from the rockets to the nets suddenly the cavaliers like sneaked themselves in and got jared allen basically for nothing this man might be one of the best executives in the NBA and this totally changes my prediction for next season. But first, today's sponsor is Surfshark VPN. If you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. It keeps you safe and private online by covering up everything you do. And using a VPN is necessary for NBA fans. We can travel the world in just one click so you can watch restricted content if you need to. If an NBA game is blacked out where you are, connect to another area and watch no problem. You can also unlock other Netflix libraries and Surfshark has servers in 95 countries. Another perfect use for Surfshark is getting around geoblocks right here on YouTube. If you've ever tried to watch a YouTube video and it says, sorry, this video is not available in your country, just turn on Surfshark and stream away. It is also a great way to stay safe on public Wi-Fi. I connect at coffee shops or well, getting my hair cut or at the doctor's office but that is super risky any smart hacker could steal my data but with surfshark i am good to connect anywhere and surfshark is giving us a huge offer to try them out get surfshark vpn at surfshark.deal slash amhoops enter promo code amhoops for 83 percent off and three extra months free we have to mention the jazz because the winner of this trade is utah but do you understand how lucky they were to be here in the first place? In 2017, they lost all-star Gordon Hayward to the Celtics. Everyone thought they were going to rebuild until some rookie named Donovan Mitchell led them to the playoffs and beat Paul George and Russell Westbrook in year one. They got better and better. Eventually, they got the one seed in the West, but they always failed in the playoffs because their defense couldn't back up Rudy Gobert. This was actually an amazing run that came out of of nowhere but that's why they did this trade it was never going to work in the playoffs we all saw it even when they were elite in the regular season the same thing always happened donovan mitchell and rudy gobert probably didn't like each other anyway so imagine danny ainge having the guts to come in and say okay we can still keep riding with this core year after year and nothing will happen or we can blow it up and he chose to blow it up and got more than any of us ever thought he could these are the pieces they have to rebuild with. They have all of their first round picks except for 2024. Young players like Sexton, Talon Horton Tucker, and Jared Vanderbilt and control of 11 first round picks from other teams including the Wolves, the Cavs, and the Nets from that Royce O'Neal trade. Plus, dude, Colin Sexton on a $72 million four-year deal, that is a huge discount for him. And if he's good, he doesn't have to stay on the Jazz. They could just flip him for even more to rebuild with. Right now, the teams with the best future assets in the league are the Jazz, the Rockets, and the Thunder. And I trust Danny Ainge more than anyone. Just look at what he's already done in like one year in Utah. 
Dude fleeced the walls for Rudy Gobert, and he got even more for Spida. But where does this put the Cavaliers? Are they now a contender? Well, they had a three-time All-Star to an amazing young core. Darius Garland and Jared Allen were All-Stars. Evan Mobley got the second most votes for Rookie of the Year. They lost in the play into Brooklyn because of youth and Darius Garland didn't have a second offensive star. He scored 34 points against the Nets and the second best guy was rookie Evan Mobley with 19. Things would have been a lot different with Donovan Mitchell out there over Karis LeVert. Donovan Mitchell is a huge upgrade over LeVert and Colin Sexton. The issue with Sexton is he was so laser focused on scoring and not much else. I know that Spida has been criticized for his playmaking over the years, but that's improved. Unlike his defense. I was disgusted at how he played D against the Mavericks in the playoffs. Watching Spencer Dinwiddie drive by him easily. I'm not even talking Luka. And unless Donovan Mitchell picks that up, which he could, by the way, he was really good on defense coming into the draft out of Louisville. Unless he does improve, a backcourt of Darius Garland and six foot one Donovan Mitchell is not scaring anybody. Of course, the good thing for the Cavaliers is their front court is scary. Jared Allen and Evan Mobley have length, rim protection, the whole thing. But Donovan Mitchell did not want this. He wanted to be in New York, and that's a huge reason I thought the Knicks should have got it. Not just because he's a good player, he actually wanted to be there. When does that ever happen to the Knicks? But Spider will be happy in Cleveland. He's not a diva player. This is not Ben Simmons. But this was a mistake by the Knicks. They collected all of these draft assets to get a star, and they lost him to Cleveland, who has less draft picks. And they lost him over what? A report from Bleacher Report said word was New York York's final best offer for Donovan Mitchell included two unprotected first round picks. Cleveland's ultimate package features three. Utah always made it clear they were hunting for future draft capital. Have fun with all those draft picks, Knicks. I know Donovan and Jalen Brunson would have been an undersized backcourt, but he wanted to be in New York. After 2024, the Knicks would have enough space to sign a max free agent but none of that happens now. They'll look to get the next disgruntled star who wants a trade, but who's that gonna be? They were just this close to landing one and they blew it. So where does this put the Cavaliers next year? Well, I'm not mad at what they gave up. Those picks are probably gonna be late in the first round with how good they are. The Cavs have already built and they're not gonna find some gem with the 20th pick. All they gave up really was Colin Sexton, who didn't even play last year when the team improved. This deal makes them a lock for the playoffs, but it's not about next year. This deal is about like five years from now when the young roster has taken steps in the playoffs. I don't see the Cavs even getting a top four seed next season. They're easily worse than the Bucks, the Nets, the Celtics, the Sixers, and the Heat. But in like a half decade, the Cavs and the Celtics have the best young rosters in the East. People are going to overreact this Donovan Mitchell deal. I know on first take, it's going to be, are the Cavs now a contender? No, of course they're not. But Spida is 25 years old. Outside of Kevin Love, their oldest player who gets real minutes is Karis LeVert at 28 and Jarrett Allen at 24. I am now banking on a team with three All-Stars now under 25 over the future of the Raptors or the Hawks or the Bulls or the Pistons. But there is sad news about Chet Holmgren. We all know now he injured his foot. He'll be out his entire first year. But there is something that no one will admit about this injury, and I made a whole video about it. Check it out.